let's understand so where to use Cassandra. So Cassandra naturally is a simple setup, maintenance and uh, code because uh, when it comes to maintenance of Cassandra, the administrator has to do nothing. Most of the things are automatically done. So if you want to scale up or scale down, remove a node or add a new node, and etc., it's very, very fast in the case of Cassandra because it provides you a simple tool which can help you to do that. And you don't have to really worry about resyncing, balancing, distribution of data, all these things are actually automatically done. You want to do it manually, you can always do it. And absolutely provides very, very high velocity of random reads and writes compared to the other NoSQL systems because of the columnar uh, storage capability and its distributed decentralized architecture. Okay. Flexible sparse uh, wide column requirements where you're talking about more on uh, capability to increase your columns uh, for a specific type as and when you need. On a need basis, you can alter your schema. It absolutely have no restriction on that. The only problem, uh, or rather I would say it's not a problem, but it is only suitable for a case where uh, secondary index needs are less, which means you have an absolutely denormalized information, which is all information is sitting associated to serve a specific query is sitting in one single table and not goes across multiple tables to get to serve a specific client query. So assuming basically non-group by kind of models, people who are very familiar with RDBMS can understand what a group by means. So non-group by kind of uh, systems, Cassandra is absolutely suitable. But if you have an application which has a requirement of group by kind of functionality, Cassandra is probably a not a right system to choose. It supports secondary indexes. It doesn't, it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't support, but when you are bringing in secondary indexes, its internal maintenance overhead becomes so high that the overall performance of the system comes down. The more secondary indexes you use, the, the less the performance. So you can use Cassandra in those cases where uh, you have less, Cassandra, less secondary index needs, where you want a very simple setup and maintenance, very high velocity of random reads and writes, and uh, wide column requirements. All these things were sort of very, very well fitted to time series or uh, uh, data which where consistency is not very very important. Okay, uh, an example would be Twitter, where we're talking about very very massive scale and high availability. Uh, a simple thing, uh, imagine the scale of these, right? So, if say for example, comes somebody comes, Angelina comes out and tweets saying that if I, if anybody who retweets what I've tweeted, I'll have a date with him. Uh, assume the number of hits that you will get on the Twitter application. Uh, it will be millions and millions of people doing it at the same time. Okay, uh, so it should be able to handle that kind of a scale and when it comes to availability naturally there are millions of people tweeting on millions of topics at the same time. So it has to be available and make sure that people don't have a bad user experience. Okay, so there is a couple of questions. Uh, is non-group and non no joins? Yes, absolutely no groups, no joining in, in Cassandra. What all features are to be looked into when checking whether the system is consistent or not? See, it's like this, right? What is consistency? Consistency basically means, uh, see, for you, I mean, the properties that we talked about, right? Uh, the set of properties. So, first thing is, say, for example, if a system has to be uh, highly available, which means that uh, if you have multiple clients querying for something, and even in case of a failure, you should still be able to service your requirements, which means you should have multiple replicas within your system. So when you have multiple replicas, uh, the consistency purpose, what you would need is basically all replicas are absolutely in sync every time a write happens, right? So whenever I'm doing the write operation, okay, I can actually give you an example of Cassandra and because Cassandra gives you a tunable consistency. So in Cassandra, if you say my, if I set my tunable consistency as the highest, that is all have to be properly in sync, then every time I do a write, right, if every time I do a write, it writes it to one replica, but the the write does not reply with a come back with a success till all the other replicas which are there in the cluster are absolutely in sync with the data. So that sort of overall your latency of the write automatically increases because yes your data is completely it made consistent behind scenes before you return a success for your write. So that is what is the consistency concept. So you you can actually obtain your feature, your consistency behind scenes, basically which means that every request comes from client application 
results in the same res result going back. Okay.